Here is the image editor window. At the top you have some menus. Below that is the toolbar. On the left we have your draw tools. On the right we have your color tools. In the middle we have your workspace, which is where your sub image will lie. And at the bottom we have an info bar. Let's deal with the drop down menus first. The first option in the file drop down menu is new. If you click it, you can set up a new image by setting the width and height in pixels. This will overwrite any sub image you currently opened. It's like starting from scratch. The next option is open. This allows you to select a file from your computer to open up into the image editor. However, like with new, this will overwrite the current sub image you have opened. The next option is save as PNG file. This will save your current sub image out to a PNG file onto your computer. The last option is close saving changes. This will close the image editor window and save any changes you've made. If you're editing an animation sequence, your file drop-down menu will look slightly different. You won't have an option for open, but instead you'll have two new options, previous and next image. This allows you to cycle left or right in the animation sequence. The next drop-down menu is edit. Inside we have undo and redo. We have erase to left color. This option will erase your entire canvas and replace it with whatever color you have selected for your left click. This color is shown in the left box in the colors tools. Below that we have delete, cut, and copy. You need to make a selection first. Then we have paste and paste from file. Paste will overlay any image you previously cut or copied from your sub image. Paste from file will do the same thing, except it'll take a file from your computer. The last option is select all. The view drop down menu contains zoom out, no zoom, and zoom in. Zooming in and out can also be done with your mouse scroll wheel. No zoom resets your sub image to a one to one ratio. Toggle grid turns an overlay grid on and off. Grid options houses the options for the grid that you'll be toggling. Inside, you can set how big each box will be in your grid. You can also change the color of your grid, and you can select whether or not things will snap to the grid. The checkbox that says use exclusive or, if this is not selected, your grid will be one single color, the color you have selected in the color box. If you select use exclusive or, your grid will change color to become more visible depending on which color is underneath your grid. The next option is show preview. This turns a preview window on and off at the bottom right of your screen below the colors tools. It's like a thumbnail of your current sub image. The last option is set transparency background. This allows you to set the checkerboard pattern wherever there's an alpha channel or transparency in your sub image. If you don't like the checkerboard pattern, you can always make it a single color with the second option. The image editor transform dropdown contains the same options that the sprite editor transform dropdown contains. I've already gone over this before, but if you need a refresher, just go back to the sprite editor video. The image dropdown has all of the same options as well. Once again, if you need a refresher, go back to the sprite editor video. Most of the toolbar should look familiar. The check mark will close the window and save your changes. Next, you can create a new image, you can open an image, or you can add an image. Then you can save your image out as a PNG. You can undo and redo. You can cut, copy, and paste. You can zoom out, reset your zoom, or zoom in. You can turn the grid on and off, and you can turn the preview window on and off. Let's talk a little bit about the tools. The first tool is the draw tool. The hotkey is D. This allows you to draw on your canvas using left or right click. You can set the sizes at the bottom. The first size is one pixel. After that, you'll be creating larger and larger circles. Using left click with the draw tool will use your left color, denoted by the left color box in the color tools palette on the right. Left clicking uses the left color and right clicking uses the right color. Those are shown on the right side of the screen. The next tool is your spray tool. The spray tool creates a spray paint effect. You select the size from the size window and you can select the hardness. The hardness selects how thick each pixel is or how feathered each pixel is. You can play around with the slider to see what I mean. 
The next tool is the eraser tool. Quite simply, it erases any pixels and replaces it with transparency. You can select the size of your eraser and the hardness of your eraser. The next tool is a color selector. It's the eyedropper. Just left or right click on any pixel in your canvas and your colors tool will adopt that color. Left click to adopt a left color, right click to adopt a right color. The next tool is the line tool. By clicking and holding, you can then drag to a different spot on your canvas and draw a straight line. The next tool is the shape tool. It can draw a polygon. You can determine the size of your stroke and below you have shape options. This allows you to determine whether or not you're drawing just an outline, drawing an outline and a fill based on your left and right color, or drawing just the fill, which is based on your left color. Then you decide whether or not you want it anti-aliased. Without going into too much detail, anti-aliasing just makes your pixels rougher or smoother. To use the tool, just click from point to point and you'll draw a shape. The next row has draw rectangle, draw ellipse, and draw rounded rectangle. Much like with the line tool, click a spot on your canvas and drag to a new spot and release. This will draw your shape. Once again, you can select the size of your draw in the size window and select whether you want to do just the outline, an outline with a fill, or just a fill, and whether or not it will be anti-aliased. In the next row of tools, you'll find the Select Region tool. Clicking and dragging creates a selection window. With this selection, you can either drag your selection around, or you can copy and paste your selection to duplicate it, or you can delete the selection. The next tool is the Magic Wand tool. Clicking a pixel on your canvas will select that color, and then any adjacent pixels that are the same color. You can set the tolerance to decide how related each color is that will be selected. The next option is Select by Spraying. This tool allows you to spray around your canvas and create a selection based on that spray. The third row has a Draw Text option. Here you select a spot on your canvas, and a new window will open. Here you can type out the text you want to appear. Once you've selected it, you can move your text around. Pressing the escape key will lock that text into place, and you won't be able to manipulate it again. On the left side, you'll see a section called Font. Here you can decide what kind of font you use and the size of your font inside a new window that opens. Also, you can decide the justification, whether you want the font to be justified to the left, justified to the center, or justified to the right. The next tool is the Fill tool. Left or right clicking on your canvas will fill your canvas with your left or right click color. Keep in mind that Fill will only fill the color of the same pixel you clicked. However, you can always change the tolerance level to change how related the color is. The last option is the Change All Pixels with the Same Color tool. It's a very interesting tool. By left or right clicking a pixel on your canvas, each pixel on your canvas that is the same color will be changed to your left or right click color. Of course, like always, you can change the tolerance level to change how related the color will be. On the right side we have the color tools. At the top we have your left and right click color. If you click on these boxes, you'll open up a color palette window. Here you can select from basic colors and then tweak their hue, saturation, luminance red, green, and blue values. You can also create your own custom color. Once you've altered a color, simply click the Add to Custom Colors button. You'll see it appear in the Custom Colors section. Click OK when you have the color you want. Alternatively, you can click on the Swatch section that's below your left and right click box. This is a great way to just select a color quickly. Below that, you'll find the Opacity selection. This will determine how visible your color will be when you paint it onto your canvas. 255 is the max value, and that's fully opaque. By lowering it, you'll become more transparent. Below that, you'll find color mode, which is blend or replace. Blend and replace work best with the opacity lowered. Blend will blend your new color with your old color. However, replace will overwrite your old color with your new color. The first section of your info bar will teach you how to use your currently selected tool in an alternative manner. The next section shows which pixel you're hovering over. 
it'll show the X and Y value. The next section shows your current zoom level. After that, we have your current canvas size in pixels. Then we have the memory section. This shows how much texture memory this image will use. As you can see, GameMaker provides a pretty robust image editor. This is great if you don't have anything advanced like GIMP or Photoshop, or you simply don't want to use something like Paint or PaintNet or what have you. It's also great for prototyping a game rather quickly.